uh, we can go to the cannon, then we shall proceed down to the torture chamber. Yes, I want to see those torture chambers. How can somebody torture people like that? Yeah, those things have been happening in the whole world. You know, they are still happening. Oh, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Rachel's show. These shirts are too small. <laughs> this is Rachel's show and welcome. So today we're going to the palace, the Kawaka, the Kawaka's palace. As I told you guys, the kingdom of Uganda is the biggest kingdom in Kampala. So, today we are going to the palace where it is the, as you know, the palace. Right behind me, you can see that it's like Engalabi. It's called Engalabi, like a drum. <laughs> but that's like a structure which represents the, the, the kingdom of Uganda. That one right there. I'm told that Kawaka passes through, he doesn't go round about. <laughs> so he goes through, as you can see, there are small gates. There's like a small gate right there. So they open for the Kawaka to go through without going round and round. And this is the Kawaka and Jagala row. We're going to the palace. The palace is up there. On the road to the palace, which is the head, there is this uh, structure right here. It has a drum and uh, what's that up there? It's a shield. A shield. A shield. Yeah. yeah. And it's written on those words. Avalangira Navambeja Avasibuka Muchibu Kaganda Sanjabudu. If I read it wrongly, please correct me. <laughs> By the way, guys, the palace is located on Mango Hill. It's located in Mango. But one thing I don't understand is, does the Kawaka stay in there? Let's go find out. Along the same road, there are several animals. I don't understand. You know, in Uganda, there are cultures which are like uh, you don't either you don't eat this or you don't. They are like gnomes and all these things. So <laughs> there are some of the animals along the Uganda, the road that goes to the palace. And ahead is my tour guide who doesn't know also things are about Buganda Kingdom. We are also going to go and discover together. So these are the... I don't know what this animal is. If you know it, please comment down below. Comment down below. Ah, it looks like an oryx. <laughs> and then just, you know, the normal flowers. Huh? Yes, of course. From the other side. From which side? Like the extreme end. That's mm. the drum. Mm. Yeah. What do you know about the palace? I don't know. Apart from it being a palace, it's like I think a residential. It's a for the king. I hope we get a tour guide because <laughs> <laughs> me, I want to know if the king really stays in here. So, guys, this is a. Uh, what is this? I don't know. But this is like the major. If you see the drum and the and the and that thing, it's a leopard. Yeah, it's a leopard. It's a cheetah. It's a cheetah. <laughs> Guys, let's discover together. <laughs> so that's the way to the to the palace, and there are of course kids who have come to check out the palace. Let's go and find out together, together forever. Okay. Definitely the entrance. But we are going to find out more, as you can see. It's beautiful and well taken care of. The gardens and all the people that have come to see. Let's go ahead and find out what's up. And then head in and then you will continue discovering with us. I really don't know how, I don't know much about this place. So I'm not going to say anything. Yeah, so just continue discovering with us. Just, uh, we'll let you know what we know and what we don't know. Yeah. Oh. I told you that we shall discover as we go. So as you can read through, I'm seeing that three, three, three kings have... Uh, the kings are called Kabakas in Luganda. They have lived in this palace. And Kabaka Mtesa Edward, the royal Popon, you can also find the torture chambers which were built by Idi Amin <laughs> with the help of the Israelites. So what was Idi Amin? Who was Idi Amin torturing? Ugandans who are refusing to... 
To do what? Who were against his methods. Of, oh of my God. Yeah. So we're going to find out. So yeah, some king stayed in here, but I don't think our king is staying here today. Established by Kabaka Mwanga. Kabaka Mwanga can also be traced uh, through the Uganda Matters. Matters, saga. yeah. yeah. If you ordered, haven't watched my video, matter, please go down. I'll link it matter below. Mattering, matterdom, whatever. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He's the one who ordered the, the killing of the Uganda Matters. Uh, but he's the one who established this. But anyway, let's go guys and find out the torture chambers and all the and what's happening in here at the Kingdom of the Uganda Kingdom <laughs> Palace. So guys we're already inside the palace. Oh, I'm going to sing but we but eh to get so comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a tour guide who is going to guide us around and tell us and take us through what's what's up what's here we are seeing buildings we are seeing things we are seeing construction of of the fence actually so yeah we need to know all about this so our tour guide is gonna be Alan Alan yeah we start from this. So let's begin. Okay. Then she goes back to Chireka, where he lives. Oh. But has he never stayed here? No, he, the current only, he has never stayed here. He has never stayed here when he's king, but when he was when young, young, he lived here. Oh. But as king, he has never lived here. Which kings have lived here? Uh, Mwanga, Daudi Chua, and the last one was Mutesa the second. Oh. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. So Kabaka doesn't live here, guys. He lives in another place in, Chile, in Chireka. Yes. So he comes here for celebrations and sometimes meetings. Oh, yes. I need a photo in front here. And we will take photos later, Mama. Photos. Later. <laughs> okay. Yeah, later. So this is So uh, the tour here begins with the Royal Mile. And it is the road that stretches from the palace okay. to the administration block, which is the big building at the end of the road. Oh, the one I saw across. Is that yes, yes, the yes. parliament? Yes, the it Buganda is where parliament. we have the Buganda parliament. Mm. But yes. still, we have... Uh, CBS now shifted to Masengere. Mm. Yes. So the building Masengere is in Masaka? No, no. <laughs> just the building close. <laughs> yes. Uh, now, uh, that building called Bulange mm. has got many offices. The offices for the ministers of the Kabaka, Kabaka. the Katikiro's office, and then it also has uh, the Bugandan people, the, the, the parliament of Buganda. The, okay. the parliament yes. is called the Chico. Yes, Chico. yes. Okay. So it, all those are found on that building. That is why it is there. So administration the administration from, from right there up to here. Yes. And uh, the plan of having a royal mile here was copied from Scotland. Oh. Yeah, so uh, there is uh, the Edinburgh Royal Mile in Scotland. Oh. Uh, Mutesa the II. Even the structure looks. Yeah, in the 1940s, while he was uh, uh, studying in England, he visited uh, Scotland. Oh. He saw that that royal mile, which was so interesting to him, yeah. then when he came back here, he decided to have that uh, administration block constructed there, wow. so that he can have the same kind of thing that I've seen the other side. Yeah. Then the royal mile has fifty-six uh, trees on both sides, and they represent the fifty-six clans. Clans. Yes. I saw it online. Then you've seen the sculptures of the totems. As you're coming this yes. side, yes. And then we also have two roundabouts on the Royal Mile. The first I one is uh, one. the one with the uh, bricks and flowers here. Somewhere there. And then the second one is down in the middle of the Royal Mile. The Ngalabi. The yes, one, which the one with the Ngalabi. <laughs> so the two have got a reserved road, which is supposed to be used only by the king. Yeah. 
So that's a kind of respect that's given to him. He's supposed to go straight from here to the other side mm -hmm. without making those uh, circles. The circles of the roundabouts, yeah. so guys. In case he's to go through here, the four bricks that you see in the middle there are supposed to be shifted. Shifted, then he goes then through. He goes through. Then the second one about down there has got some small gates in the middle mm. and they are also supposed to be opened only for him. Okay. And for the we just have to keep on moving around the wow. engine because we don't match him. Yeah. I said to ask you something. <laughs> I don't know, maybe you tell us a little bit. So guys, I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying the history. I'm enjoying the way they're explaining everything. Yeah, so keep keep on, keep tuned. Let's go. Let's keep uh, learning the history of the Buganda. The Buganda, as, the, uh, is, as I told you, is the largest kingdom in, in Uganda. And they have so much respect for their Kabaka. That's why they have a palace. Other kingdoms have palaces, but man, Kabaka of Uganda is the... And then it's overseeing the city right there. You can see the NSSF building. Cham Towers and... Uh, Aya, so that's Aya building, whatever. <laughs> if I take you around, I'll get you lost. So yeah, it oversees the city, in short. Language, the grinding stones are the ones that we call Mango. Mango. So it was uh, from these grinding stones that we still gained the name. Okay. So Mwanga lived here up to 1897. Mm. And uh, that was when he was arrested by the British. Mm. After having tried to fight against them. So 1897. Mm. 1897 yeah so accepting bugana kingdom to become a british protectorate mm. and uh, he did not realize that at some point they'll have to reduce his powers mm. when they did so he was so disappointed and angry at the british then he began fighting against them mm. but uh, he was not strong enough he didn't have enough weapons to fight them mm. so he was arrested and taken to the seashells islands in the indian ocean yeah, yeah, so where he later with died the yes with the, yeah. with the cover leg of the world. Uh, so he died there in 1903. Oh, he died in exile? Oh. Yes, yes. <laughs> then uh, in 1910, his remains were brought back. Oh. Yes. Now, mm -hmm. uh, he was succeeded by his son, Daudichua, mm. who was made king at the age of one. Then what he was. Mean? No, 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 he was one. Why do I remember like that? <laughs> you are the uh, SST. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, 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 uh, that's, uh, now, in the primary syllabus, they say three, but that's a big mistake. Oh. So the people who said the, 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 the history that people, the kids study in primary school, uh. has got lots of. Wrong know, information. Yes. I'm going to see my SST teacher. <laughs> <laughs> not, 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 okay. not them. Uh, you should sue the government. The that government has failed to that change. Has, yes. Yeah, Until now? Until now, they are still teaching such things. Anyway. And uh, they still show that uh, uh, Chin to the first the first Muganda uh, is Chin to the first king of Muganda. But those are two different people. Uh, Chin to the first Chintu Muganda is the myth. first Muganda. Yeah, and that Chintu is a myth. myth. Yeah. But and then there is Chin to a king. The first king. The that first one. King. Uh, his, uh, <coughs> he was real, he existed, and his name originally was not even Chintu. Mm -hmm. He was, uh, <laughs> he was called Kato. Oh my Kato. god! But when he took over kingship, he named himself Chintu because the people of Uganda related so much to the other Chintu. Mm. So he wanted to steal their hearts by naming himself Chintu. Genesis, Genesis. Yes. What? What? So he became the first king of. Uganda. Yes, but he was, his name was not Chin. But yes. Now, uh, Daudi Chua, uh, I've told you, was made king at the age of one and then he was given three regents to help him with the leadership until he became old enough. So at the age of 18, he was crowned and given powers as king. And then uh, he was the first king of Uganda to visit Europe. He went to England for a bit of his studies. He also had military training there. And he was one of those people that fought in the First World War. Oh. Then he was knighted by the Queen and given a number of medals. Then he passed away in 1939 and he was succeeded by his son, Mutesa II. So Mutesa II was the third and last king of Uganda to live on this hill. Oh. Now, uh, you know very well that after Uganda's independence... Mm -hmm. Sorry, let me... Mm -hmm. He was the last person to live here. Mm. Now, uh, I've told you that uh, he was made the first ceremonial president mm. uh, of Uganda after independence 1962. Mm. 
but then uh, Prime Minister was uh, voting with the executive powers. Mm. Then at some point the two people fell apart because of what as Prime Minister had already begun acting as a dictator mm. and at the same time he was very corrupt. Mm. So because of his corruption, uh, the Uganda National Assembly, which is now the parliament, mm. they decided to impeach him. And uh, they were almost through that impeachment process, then he decided to dissolve that parliament and uh, he also suspended the constitution. Wow. Then the king who was president realized that he could no longer work with Obote. So he called upon the Buganda parliament to sit and discuss about Obote's actions. Mm. So uh, the Buganda parliament passed a resolution in which Obote was supposed to take the government of Uganda off the Buganda land. And in that way, Buganda kingdom was breaking away from the rest of Uganda. Mm. Then when uh, Obote got that information, he decided to organize an attack using Idi Amin as the Amin commander, either to kill the king here or just to have him arrested. Oh. So the king escaped, he went to exile in England. Everybody was going yeah. to exile. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so uh -huh. he was poisoned and died there in 1969, and our people believe that it was plotted by Obote. Of course, because yeah. one who was chasing and he abolished him. Like yeah, so after he uh, announced himself president, uh, he passed a constitution in 1967, uh, that was abolishing the kingdoms in Uganda and then he turned this place into a military base. Yeah, so the soldiers occupied this hill from 1966 up to 1997 and uh, that was when uh, uh, President Museveni decided to give the hill back to the kingdom. Mm. Then the soldiers were taken away. Oh, until President Museveni came, came. Yes. it was a military base. Yeah, it was a military base oh. until 1997. I think you are not yet. 1997, I was born. I, I was born near. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay. Now, uh -huh. the, the, the current king. The current king, yeah. Uh, after the death of his father in 1967, he could not be crowned because the oh. kingdoms had already uh, been abolished. It was about uh, 1969. She was. Uh, let me see. <coughs> Fourteen. My mask cannot work. Fourteen. Ah, okay. Yes. Yeah, he was fourteen, so he couldn't be uh, he couldn't be crowned because the kingdoms had already been abolished. Mm. So he had to stay in England where he was already doing his studies mm. until when the political situation stabilized in Uganda. Mm. Then he came back here in 1986. Then he was crowned in 1993. Oh, so 1993. 1993 was when he was officially made king. Mm. Yeah. Though he's uh, he At was he was made ceremony. He was 38. Oh. When he was crowned. Yes. So, so this house here was constructed from 1922 19 to 1927. Mm. And those were the days of uh, Dawoodi Chua. Mm. Uh, I've told you that uh, he was uh, the first king of uh, Uganda to visit Europe. Mm. So while he was in England, he also visited the Buckingham Palace. Mm. And uh, the Buckingham Palace has got two parts. There's the, the one at the front mm -hmm. and then the second one behind. So he liked the second one that's behind a bit small mm. then he decided to have uh, almost the same kind of structure constructed here yeah. yeah. and yeah. it was constructed to the help of the British government. That's the structure. That's, uh, a donation to the Uganda people. Oh. Wow. And, uh, it is the official, it is the main building mm. in the King's Palace. What are all those houses doing in the King's Palace? Uh, now, those were built here in 1934 and uh, they had offices. They were used as offices until 1955 hmm. and uh, that was uh, uh, the opening of the other administration block, Bulange. Uh, the one ahead. Yeah, then all the offices were shifted and these were turned into houses for those people who worked on these grounds. Oh. So even now, the people who live in these houses mm. uh, are the, those people who work on the ground, uh, most of them being the guards. Oh. Uh, like the staff and all. Then here we have uh, the remains of the former <laughs> king's cars. Which king now? That was Mutesa II. <laughs> So he had a number of luxurious cars. cars. And among these he had Daimlers, 
Cadillacs and Rolls Royces. Rolls Royce. Uh, so some of these cars were destroyed when this place was attacked by the soldiers in Bogote. Mm. And uh, this one here, uh, which was uh, the Daimler Limo, model 1962. Uh, by the time this place was attacked, it had been taken down to Kampala for some repairs because mm. it had some problems. So that's how it, uh, it survived. To survive. Mm. Then. Uh, when you look under the Daimler, there's a second car. You can see this oh. bumper and the frame. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, the Cadillac, which is American. So the Cadillac was completely destroyed mm. during the attack on this year. Mm -hmm. Then this one here still has the oh, same of the, the two Rose arrows. Royce. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the Rolls Royce, which was also completely destroyed. Damaged. But anyway, we still have the remains. <laughs> yeah. Next, <laughs> okay. uh, a cannon. Yeah, so this was one of uh, Idi Amini's cannons. It had to be Amin. And, uh, <laughs> it was a German <laughs> machine uh, and the Second World War technology. So he got a number of such cannons from uh, Gaddafi, the former president of Libya. Mm. Because Gaddafi was a good friend of Idi Amin and uh, he tried to support Idi Amin during the fight against the Tanzanian soldiers. Mm. who had attacked with an intention of overthrowing Idi Amin. So he gave him a number of weapons. And uh, since this was a military base in those days, this was brought here. Mm. Then as the soldiers were leaving this place in 1997, they realized that it was no longer working, so they just left it behind. And for us, it was displayed here to commemorate the 18 years of dictatorship that we went through. Yeah. And, uh, and that was uh, mm. from the first regime of Obote, 1966, mm. up to 1971. Then Idi Amin came in for eight years, that's 71 to 79. In total, that's uh, just 18 years of having uh, bad leadership in Uganda. I see. And whenever you look at this, we are reminded of that. Uh, mm. Okay. Let's get down. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So we go Let's to, go to the Toshi Chambers. What's the history of the Toshi Chambers? We are Very chilly. For some, some few meters, about 200 meters. To the Toshi Chambers? Yes. What? Okay, let's go. The Amin Amari that was constructed by the Israelites in the early 1970s but later turned into a Toshi Chamber where thousands of defendants lost their lives. Are they torturing people? Oh, the dictatorship has always been torturing people because of the political reasons. Anyway, let's go. But anyway, it's not good. Because of they because they, they disagree with the way they govern the country. Mm, yeah. Things like that. And, uh, sometimes if, if someone is just seen as a threat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they could also be tortured and killed. Now, this was constructed uh, to be an armory. Mm -hmm. Armory, yeah. where they keep the weapons. weapons. Yeah, so the construction was done uh, from 1971 to 72, and uh, it was done by the Israelis. Mm -hmm. So these Israelis used to do a lot of construction with the Uganda government. Uh, they also used to supply the uh, to train the army and supply it with weapons. Mm. So Idi Amin was the one who called them here to construct this as an armor. Okay. Yeah, so he used it to store his weapons for only eight months. And after those months, he got information that uh, Obote, the one he had overthrown, was in Tanzania trying to get some military assistance to fight back. So Idi Amin took out the weapons which were being kept here so that they could prepare for war against the water. Then during the preparations, he began arresting all those people who were suspected to be supporters of the uh, water and still for whoever seemed to be a political threat. And also he was going to be brought into this place and he started to into the torture chamber. Now this had a strong mechanical plate at the door which could be electrified. And inside here, when you look at the walls down there, there's that dark green stripe surrounding this whole place. Was that water? Yes, so whenever it rained, this place could be flooded by water at <coughs> that level. 
and uh, during the dry seasons, the soldiers could use some trucks to bring water here, and this water could also be electrified. Oh, so you couldn't escape. No escape. So whenever the soldiers brought prisoners here, they could first switch off the power from outside and force them to walk through the water, and they could first torture them using this electricity. So they could keep switching on and off, on and off for about 30 to 40 minutes, and uh, they could do that trying to extract information from these people. Then after that kind of torture, they could finally switch off and force them to climb into these five rooms, which worked as the prison cells. So this had some sliding doors on the outside. So all these doors were broken away by the last group of soldiers who we seen in 1997. Then inside the rooms, the soldiers could pack so many prisoners and lots of them could uh, uh, die of uh, suffocation. Mm -hmm. See, they could uh, uh, pack about uh, between 100 to 150 prisoners. Mm -hmm. So these people could run the uh, oxygen and they could yeah. suffocate to death. And then after some few days, others would die of uh, starvation because they had not feed them with uh, anything. Then for the bodies, would be carried on the traps and dropped on the roadsides. A few of them to the King's Lake, down in the valley, and then the neighboring... The Rockers Lake? Yes. Then Idi Amin used this as a torture chamber for six years. That was from 1973 to 79. That's a long time. Yes. And uh, uh, he said to have killed an estimated number of about 5,000 people just in this place. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at the walls here, there are lots of writings, but mm -hmm. these are written by visitors who come here. I think uh, so. Most of which are students who just feel like they should leave the park. And then there are some few people who believe that uh, their relatives and friends must have been from so yeah. the Hey, mate, they are still resting in front of this was too much torture, man. This was too much. Thank you so Thank you. much. You're welcome.